Welcome to our lecture online. In the second part of this set of problems, we're now going to try to keep the block from sliding downward. So what's the minimum force required? And again, the friction force, uh, the coefficient of friction for static friction is 0.3, for kinetic friction is 0.25. I don't think we need the kinetic coefficient of friction. The angle is still 35 degrees. And the weight of the block, the mass times acceleration to gravity is equal to 500 newtons. So now, the block, of course, will slide downwards on its own. So what is the force required to keep it from sliding downward? In this particular case, we can have the force actually acting in different directions. For example, if you push it, if you push this way, you're simply working against the weight and the friction force would actually be aiding you. But then when you start changing the angle of the force, essentially you could also push the block this way and stop it from sliding downward if you create a friction force large enough to keep the block from sliding down. And so the question might be, which way would you require less force? Again, we're looking for the minimum force. Is it this way or is it this way? And then after that, we may say, well, maybe there's an angle at which we can push that will e even require a less force. So we can have it like this, we can have it like this, and maybe we can have it at an angle somewhere in between. And one of those positions may give us the answer where there's less force required, the least amount of force required. So we're not going to give away the secret yet, that will come later, but you'll see, first of all, we'll calculate the force like this, then we'll calculate the force like this, and then we'll find the angle that will give us the least force of any potential uh, direction that we can push the force in. So we'll, go, we'll start with this case right here and we'll see what happens as it develops. Again, what we need to do here is find all the forces related to what's happening on the block. We have the weight of the block that pushes it downward, which is mg. We then have the perpendicular component and we have the parallel component of that force. So this here would be the mg cosine of theta and this here would be the mg sine of theta. Again, this is the same angle right here of 35 degrees. And notice there will then be a perpendicular force, the normal force pushing back. That's the reactionary force, the normal force. And of course, the normal force would be equal to mg cosine of theta. And then finally, we have a force. And let's see what color should I use. I'll try the orange color, see if that works then we'll have a friction force that is actually aiding. In this case, the block will be sliding down, but the friction force will be keeping it from sliding down. And so this is the friction force, and the friction force is equal to the normal force times mu, in this case, the static coefficient of friction, and the normal force, as we saw, is equal to mg cosine theta times mu sub s. So now we're going to write the same equation. We start out with F equals MA, or more precisely, F net equals MA, but since A must equal zero, because all we're doing here is keeping the block from sliding down, so there's no acceleration, that means that F net would equal zero. And so now, what forces do we have? Well, we have the force pushing up, we have the friction force aiding, and then we have the mg sine theta, the parallel component of the weight, trying to push the block down. So that gives us F, the force by which we push, parallel to the incline, plus the friction force. Where's the friction force? Right here. We have the mg cosine theta times mu sub s, and that minus, because now we have the mg sine theta, mg sine theta, which acts downward, and all that should add up to zero. So essentially, of course, I forgot to write down that these are the forces aiding minus the forces opposing what you're trying to do. And again, what we're doing here is, and that's of course equals to zero, so what we're saying here is that the force is aiding, meaning the force is preventing it from moving, which is this force plus the friction force, and from that, we subtract the forces opposing what we're trying to do, which is holding it from moving. mg sine theta will try to get it to move. And the difference between those two forces should add up to zero if there's no acceleration. So let's write the equation down then. So we have F plus mg, we'll rewrite the equation here, plus mg 
cosine theta times mu sub s minus mg sine theta is equal to zero. And since we're looking for f, we're going to move this across the other side, move this across the other side, so we have f. And here we want f to be greater than, so instead of going from equal to, which is the point at which the two forces are equal, so nothing will move, but then if we have a greater force than that, well, let's see here. Equal to or greater than, I believe. Equal to or greater. And let me show you why. If it's equal to, if the force keeping it from sliding is equal to the force trying to make it slide, it's not going to start sliding. And therefore, greater than or equal to will prevent it from sliding. And then we have mg sine theta, which is now positive because it went to the right side of the equal sign. And this will be negative minus mg cosine theta times mu sub s, like so. And so this is equal to, so f greater than or equal to 500 newtons times the sine of 35 minus 500 newtons times the cosine of 35 degrees times 0 0.30 for the static coefficient of friction. And so f must be greater than or equal to and the numbers are going to be the same as the last video, except let's recalculate them. We have 35, take the sine, and times 500. And so we get 286.8, 286.8 newtons minus 35 times the cosine times 500 times 0.3. And we get 122.9. So the force required must be at least equal to or greater than so 286.8 minus 122.9. That gives us 163.9 newtons. And of course, we can round it off with F is greater than or equal to 164 newtons. And that's a good, nice way to put the answer. So here we found the minimum force required to keep the block from sliding down from a resting position with that kind of friction and pushing parallel to the incline. Now the question is, is that the smallest amount? I'll give you a hint, it actually isn't. There's another way in which we can push, another direction that will actually give us a smaller force required. So in the next video, we're going to try to put the force here. We're simply gonna push the block against the incline, increasing the friction force, and maybe that will require less force to keep the block from sliding. So that's going to be our next video to see if that works. And ultimately, we'll do the more general approach to find the minimum force required, and that will come after that. So stay tuned, and we'll give you more hints as to how to solve this problem. You said this was the same answer as before? Well, these two are the same answers as before. So, the, the, so this quantity was there before, except in the previous video they were added because we're trying to push the block upward, which means that the friction force is pointing the opposite direction. In this case, the friction force is actually aiding you from keeping the block from sliding, so now we subtract the two instead of adding the two. That's the only difference. Okay. Yeah. I would say the last thing is not the same. Yeah, no, the last answer is not the same, but these two individual answers, these two components keep popping up every time we do the problem like that. Okay.